Hi again, Mark here from TalkingBass.net. This is a quick follow-up lesson in the Music Theory for Bass series, just going back over scale degrees. Remember that there's a whole bunch of lessons available over at TalkingBass.net, along with a load of weekly blog articles on bass-related stuff. Also, if you sign up to Talking Bass, you can download the free scale reference manual for bass that's full of scale patterns for you to practice. So, in the previous lessons on intervals, I touched on the difference between intervals and scale degrees, and I just want to clear up some of the details and introduce a little extra naming into the labels. As I covered in the first intervals lesson, the interval names such as the major third, perfect fifth, etc., are based on the concept of numbered scale degrees. So, if we run through a major scale, such as the C major scale, we can number the scale degrees 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So, E would be the third uh, degree of the C major scale, 1, 2, 3. G would be the fifth degree of the scale, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And we can move it around, so C sharp would be the third degree of the A major scale, 1, 2, 3, A, C sharp, etc. Intervals can add the terms major, minor, perfect, augmented and diminished uh, to give a more accurate description of the interval distance. So C to E is a major third interval, C to E flat is a minor third interval. Uh, if you need to know more about these terms, just work through the three intervals lessons that are on the YouTube channel and over at uh, TalkingBass.net. The main principles to understand are that intervals are used to indicate a distance between any two notes, regardless of the key or scales in use, and scale degrees tell you how a note relates to a specific scale or key tonic. Now it's a subtle but a very important difference. One aspect of scale degrees that can really help with understanding them is learning the names that are often used in place of these basic numbers. Now, as you probably know, the scale degree number one is often referred to as the tonic of the key or scale, so C in C major. Now, the other degrees also have these labels. So, we're in C major here. So, C there is the tonic. The second degree, which will be D in C, is the supertonic. The third degree is the mediant. The fourth degree is the subdominant. The fifth degree is the dominant. Sixth degree is the submedian. Seventh degree is the leading tone. So we've got C, the tonic in C major, D, supertonic, E, median, F, subdominant, G, dominant, A, submedian, and B, the leading tone in C major. Now, these names might seem a little bit much to take in on the first hearing, but a little closer examination can make things a little bit easier in memorising them. First of all, you should learn that the fifth degree is called the dominant. Now, you may have heard this term before, especially if you've learned any chords, uh, because it gives rise to the name of the dominant seven chord, which is that. That's because that particular type of chord is built on the fifth degree of a major scale. Uh, you might also hear of chord progressions described as dominant to tonic. Uh, that means chord number five to chord number one. So in C major, that will be chord no of G, C, D, E, F, G, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, to chord number 1, which is C. So we'd have G to C. G to C. Just so happens to play the G dominant 7 there to C. Okay? This dominant scale degree is really, really, really important in tonal music, and it's got a special relationship with the tonic that we'll cover over and over and over again in these lessons. But for now, just make sure that you get the dominant label firmly established in your musical memory. So we've got the tonic in C, is C, dominant G in C. Next up is the fourth degree, or subdominant. This is easy to remember because it's just below the fifth, hence the word sub. So the dominant scale degree of a major scale is the fifth, one, two, three, four, five, and the subdominant scale degree is the fourth, one, two, three, four. So dominant there, Subdominant just below it at the fourth. Now let's deal with scale degree number two, the supertonic. Again, this is really easy to remember because the tonic is one, and just think two is higher, hence the name super. So in C major, C is the tonic, D, second degree, supertonic, so just above it. Now that leaves us with scale degrees three, six, and seven. Now ignore seven for now, and we'll just deal with three and six. 
Scale degree three is known as the median, which I think I probably remembered um, because it sounds a little bit like medium, and I saw that as middle, and so it is midway between the tonic and the dominant. So one, two, three, four, five, and I saw medians as the in between one and five. Three, so we've got one, two, three, four, five. So three, middle, medium, median, that kind of process going on. Whatever method you use, once you've memorized it, scale degree six is quite easy because it's the submediant. And you can remember this relationship between three and six simply as six is two times three. Now, in reality, the subdominant and submediant use the term sub because of that interval inversion that we covered in the intervals lesson part three. If you recall, the fifth becomes a fourth when inverted and vice versa, and the third becomes a sixth and vice versa. So if we take a major third interval from C, the third is E, drop it down an octave to that E, and we get the E to C is a minor third interval. So hence the subterm. Again, if you need a refresher lesson, just go back through those intervals lessons, specifically intervals uh, lesson three. So that just leaves us with the seventh degree uh, called the leading tone. Now this is very easy to remember because it leads us back into the tonic and it's got the strongest melodic pull of any scale degree. Uh, because of this, it's a really important scale degree and it plays a vital role in the dominant chord mentioned earlier. So if we go through the um, scale degrees, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, you hear it leading into C. Seventh degree, leading back into the tonic, leading tone. So now let's go back through all those scale degrees again uh, in order using the C major scale as an example. So we've got the C major scale here on the third fret of the A string. So C is the tonic, D, the second degree, supertonic, E, third degree, is the mediant, F, fourth degree, is the subdominant, G, fifth degree, which is the dominant, A, sixth degree, which is the submediant, B, seventh degree, which is the leading tone. Now, even though that you're not likely to start talking of scale degrees in terms of submediant or sub supertonic when trying to show uh, your friends a new great <laughs> lick or bass line, uh, these terms are used heavily in conventional study of harmony and music theory. So if you need to sit any exams, then you're gonna have to know these things inside out. Also, as I mentioned at the start of this lesson, these names can help a little in understanding the difference between scale degrees and basic intervals. Uh, the dominant scale degree in C, one, two, three, four, five, is G, and it'll be a G whether we play it above or below the tonic or in whatever octave. So G there is the dominant, still the dominant, 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 that G wherever you have it is the dominant scale degree in C major. If we were to use basic intervals in describing the positions of G from C, we would say that this G here is a perfect fifth from this C. This G up here might be a perfect twelfth from here. This G below would be a perfect fourth distance from the tonic because we're using intervals to describe the distance rather than the relation, the scale relationship. I know it can be uh, confusing to use the term fifth for two very different concepts, such as scale degrees and intervals. So this is why learning these names, such as dominant, can be really useful. So in summary, just try to memorize the seven names, tonic, supertonic, mediant, subdominant, dominant, submediant, and leading tone, and try to begin seeing scale degrees by name instead of just by number. Uh, as always, please like this video and make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel by uh, clicking on the uh, little subscribe button, and uh, that way you get reminders when new lessons are released. Uh, there should be a new lesson released every week, uh, uh, but I do sometimes publish an extra lesson midweek. Uh, if you have any recommendations or requests for future lessons, uh, just be sure to get in touch and remember to leave a comment. Okay, see you later.